I'm putting up another one of my green and white striped kushals. I have a video where I show how I process it to put it in a freezer and I will link to that. But today I'm going to be putting some of the one, some of this one in the freezer. They're so big it'd be hard to eat it all at one time unless you had a really big family. But I'm also going to be using some of it fresh. So I'm going to show you today how to make some of the recipes that I enjoy making with fresh kushal squash. So once you have the kush all cut up into pieces, I showed how to do that in the video that I just referenced. And if you go to that video and read through the comments, there are all kinds of tips on what to do with kush all squash. So that's just like a gold mine of information. But once you've got them in smaller pieces, it is pretty easy to use a vegetable peeler to peel off the outer rind if you're going to be using them fresh. So it comes off pretty easily. So the first recipe I'm going to show you that we enjoy eating a lot is roasted kushal squash. So it couldn't be simpler. It's really good as a side dish. It's good on top of salads. Just lots of different ways to eat it. And the first thing is just to cut it in cubes. And the size of your cubes will really just depend on your personal preference. How big you want them. I, I would try to make them uniform just so that they will um, cook consistently so that they'll roast consistently in the oven. So this recipe is really easy to, you know, if you don't have as much or if you want to do, double it or whatever, but you're basically looking for about six cups uh, is what I look for to make for my family. You can do more, you could do less. It's just, you know, it's as simple as roasting vegetables actually. So I'm just about there on that. Might do one more. Okay, once you've got your kush all chopped up, you want to spread it out on a baking sheet. You want to preheat your oven to 400 degrees. And I'll link to the recipe below so that you can go see it. And the great thing about any kind of recipe like this that's so simple is that you could change it to, to suit your taste. So I'm going to use, today I'm going to use rosemary and garlic and uh, some Parmesan cheese, but certainly you could just use salt and pepper. You could use oregano you could use whatever kind of spices that you normally use whatever seasonings that you prefer so we're going to kind of drizzle olive oil it's about four tablespoons for this amount and i like to line my pan with parchment that's not necessary it just kind of helps with the cleanup another alternative is instead of doing it this way you could put all of this in a bowl and then toss it with olive oil and kind of stir it around that way that's usually what I do, to be honest with you. Seems like it's easier than... Seems like everything gets more uniformly covered than doing it this way. So we're going to roast this for about 20 minutes, and then we're going to pull it out of the oven and add some other spices. toss it around to make sure it's all covered. Now that we've got it tossed in the olive oil, we're going to sprinkle some salt and then we'll be ready to put it in the oven for 20 minutes. So now the kush has been roasting for 20 minutes and we're going to kind of stir it around again. And the time, you might need to play with the time. Like now I'm going to put it back in for 10 minutes, but if it's not done, of course you would just keep keep um, roasting until it was done to your liking, whether you like it really mushy or kind of still firm. And now I'm going to sprinkle the rosemary. If you had fresh rosemary, that would be even better, but all I have is dried. And if you don't like rosemary, you could leave this off. You could change it for something else. It's just personal preference on that part. And I have some I have like two cloves of garlic that I've minced up, so I'm going to put that around and kind of stir it around. Again, you could use more or less or none. I'm going to use some black pepper. I'm 
and then I'm going to grate some Parmesan cheese over it. Again, personal preference. If you'd rather not do this part, skip it. If you want to use something else, you could certainly try that. But this is the flavors. The rosemary and the Parmesan, Parmesan and the garlic seem to really go good together for us. It's what we like. Then I'm going to put this back in the oven for 10 more minutes. So I just got the kush out of the oven and I wish you could be here to smell it. The rosemary, the garlic, it smells so good and it is so good. It's really hot, but I'm going to try to try to take a bite. Maybe if I blow on it a little bit. Mm. So good. Really, really good. So this is our favorite way to eat fresh kush all. You could do this if you if, if you froze it, if you cut, cut it up into cubes. But I found with squash, a lot of times it doesn't freeze very well if you're going to try making something like this with it. Now, if you're going to make pies or uh, put it in soups or those kind of things where it's already going to get cooked down, it's fine. But you could certainly try that. Another way uh, that we like to use kushal, whether fresh or frozen, is to make a soup. I make a soup out of it. And then the other ways would be like in breads and cakes and like in a pumpkin roll. We make pumpkin rolls, but it's kushal rolls. So I really enjoy that. I'm going to stop and I'm going to eat dinner. I'm going to eat me some of this and maybe make me a salad to go with it. And then I'm going to show you how to make a kushal pie. So now we're going to make a kushal pie. A kushal pie is really very similar to a pumpkin pie. So if you have a favorite pumpkin pie recipe, you could just substitute the kushal for the pumpkin and it would work out fine. I usually, if I'm making a pumpkin pie, I like to use Granny's recipe just because that's the one that I grew up on. The recipe I'm using today is not Granny's, but it is very similar. So I'm going to read off the ingredients, but as always, the recipe description or the link to the recipe will actually be in the description down below. So it takes two cups of kushal, cooked kushal. I've already cooked it and um, baked it in the oven this morning. So and then one cup of cream one cup of brown sugar, three eggs, one half teaspoon of salt, one half teaspoon of cinnamon, one fourth teaspoon of ginger, one eighth teaspoon of allspice, and then one nine inch uh, pie shell, unbaked. You could make your own, which is what I did today, or you could purchase one. I think those that you roll out are especially good, the kind that kind of rolls, comes in a tube, but you can use whatever kind of pie shell you want or make one like I did today. And this is a really easy pie. It's basically you mix all these things together. So I have the kushal and I'm gonna add my three eggs that I've already, I've beaten those and already kind of beat them up so I wouldn't have to worry about that when I put, in, put them in. Go ahead and give that a little stir, my whisk. I have all my spices and my salt here together and I'm gonna put those in. And I'm gonna go ahead and put the sugar in, the brown sugar. Woo, I had a big splatter, did you guys see that? I, I got the uh, sugar out before I ate dinner and it was really in there, so I splattered some. What's a cookbook without splatters, though, right? All my cookbooks that I use a lot have splatters. Now I'm gonna add the cream. And it really doesn't matter what order you add the ingredients. You just, you could add them all at once and it would still be fine. Now we're ready to add it to our pie shell. going to bake it at 350 for about 45 minutes. Sometimes in my oven it takes a little bit longer. In yours it may take less, so you just have to keep an eye on it. And you just want to bake it till the center is firm, till it's firm throughout. Now 
Now we're ready to put it in the oven. This is not a pie that boils over usually, but if you're worried about that, you could certainly set it on a baking sheet, and sometimes that helps it, makes it easier to get it to the oven without spilling too. But now I'm gonna put it in the oven and bake it until it's done, and then I'll show you how it turns out. So the next recipe I'm gonna make with my fresh kushaw today is I'm gonna make a pot of kushaw soup. Now this is a soup that we enjoy, but it is rather a, I guess you would say a bland kind of soup. Kind of like, um, it's not spicy or anything like that. Now you could add all kinds of things to it. This could be just like a soup base, but it is a very simple soup. So I'll tell you that before you make it and expect some kind of exotic flavor. It's not gonna have that, but it is a soup that we enjoy eating. And you're gonna need five cups of peeled cubed uh, kushaw or other winter squash. It would work with the other winter squash, pumpkin or whatever you had. Butternut would be good. One potato, one medium potato peeled and cubed. Then you need one and one half cups water and also one and one half cups chicken stock. A teaspoon of salt and a third cup heavy cream and that's it. Like I said, you could mess around with it and add anything you wanted to to try to spice it up if you if that's what you prefer, more of a spicier soup. And we like spicy soups sometimes too, but this is just kind of a really simple light soup. So first I'm gonna put in my kushaw and my potato that I've already chopped up, cubed up. I'm gonna put in part of my broth and my water mixture, but I'm going to save a little bit of it. So the reason you want to save some of your broth back, some of your broth water mixture, is because some people like really thin soup, some people like, you know, a thicker consistency. So once this is cooked down, then you'll be able to judge, do you need to add a little bit more of the broth and water, or do you, you know, are you good to go with the consistency that it is? I'm also going to add a teaspoon of salt. So we're gonna cover this and we're gonna cook it for about 45 minutes or until the squash and the potato are really done all the way through, you know, so they're really soft. And then we'll show you the next step. Now that the squash and the potato have got really soft, done all the way through, now it's time to puree it. You could, if you wanted to, you, you don't have to. You could certainly eat it like this. You could kind of take a potato masher or something or the back of a spoon like I'm doing now and kind of just squish it up a little bit, mash it up to your liking. Or you could take it to a um, lift out the just the squash and the potato and put it in a food processor and blend it that way. Or if you have a submersible, submersible um, blender, you could do it that way. That's what I have, so that's usually what I do. So once you get the soup to the consistency that you like, whether that's by mashing with a potato masher, with the back of a spoon, or using a blender like I did, or put it in your food processor, if you do put it in a food processor, be careful about getting the liquid. Just make sure that you just get the potatoes and the squash because liquid in food processors usually doesn't turn out well. But now that you've done that, if you think you need to add some more water or your ch reserved chicken stock, you can do that. I added just a little bit more. And then now we're going to add the cream, and then it's going to be completed after it cooks for a few minutes. So I'm going to add one third of heavy cream. Stir that in. And let it cook just a few more minutes, and it'll be ready to eat. So we like to eat this soup with Ritz crackers, any kind of cracker, with cornbread, especially good with cornbread and maybe a side of onion, a glass of milk. It keeps very well in the refrigerator if you don't eat it all at one sitting, one meal. You can freeze it. And it's really simple, but it's just something that we, that we enjoy. And the recipe actually comes from, I don't think I told you in the beginning, it's Mark Sohn's uh, recipe from one of his Appalachian cooking cookbooks. It's where I first learned it years ago, and we've been enjoying it ever since. 
So it's supper time, so we're now eating the Koshaw soup. You can see the consistency of it. Again, you can, you know, make it thinner if you want to with adding more cream or more chicken stock or water even would be fine. We've got some leftover cornbread we're going to eat with it tonight for supper. And then we've got some onion, which always goes good. A glass of milk, and that'll be a meal, right, Dad? That'll be very good. So we've eaten our Kushaw soup, and I had Kushaw for dinner, and now we're going to finish the Kushaw day off with a piece of pie. So Matt's going to cut him a piece of pie. I've already cut mine and tasted it. Make sure it was good before he had to had to have it, right? Yep. You can see the texture of it. Turns out very nice. Typically, I would make a whipped cream to go on top of it, but I just didn't get that accomplished today, so we're just going to eat it like this, and I'm sure it'll still be good. I hope you enjoyed seeing three different ways to use Kushaw squash. It's really a very versatile vegetable, one that's kind of undergrown, I think in a lot of areas. In days gone by, maybe it was grown more often, but today you don't often see them. A lot of time I've heard, had a lot of people tell me since my last video that people will see them at farmer's markets and stuff and they don't even realize they're edible. They think that they're just fall decorations. They're not only edible, but they're really tasty. As always, I'll put the links to the recipes in the description below. I hope you'll leave a comment and tell me if you regularly grow Kushaw or purchase Kushaw. What's your favorite way to cook it? And as always, I hope you'll continue to drop back by and help me celebrate Appalachia.